Welcome to the channel, I'm Robin Clevett and this is The Big Build. Now, I've done all the underfloor heating on the job and this video is a little insight to how we did it and the product we used. And if you're interested in a low build underfloor heating system for existing floors, then keep watching. So we're well into doing the first part of the underfloor heating here. So let me give you a little run through of how exactly we do this. So take this. This floor is an existing screed. So this was part of the building that was an extension in the sort of late 90s. Then we go through into what is also an extension, but partly an old floor. So we've got our new, it's been latexed and a, a liquid damp proof membrane been put all over the top. So we flattened it off. We put a liquid damp proof membrane. So we've got all of our bits and pieces for this part of the underfloor heating here. It's all ready to be laid as soon as we've got the other half, which is prepared. I'll show you that now. So all of this part of the building is all prepared. We've got the system in, it's all clean, it's ready to go. And once we've done this, it'll be gone off tomorrow. We will then move all of our bits and pieces from here back onto this side, which will free us up to lay the rest of the underfloor heating. Um, it's a great system this, I've used it a few times. Indeed, I did it at my own house across all the existing slabs. It works beautifully. The whole uh, design of the system is worked out based on heat losses of the building, etc, etc. And um, you can't fault it because the liquid screed, which is very thin, it's only 22 millimetres, it goes over the top, encapsulate the pipes and it transmits the heat really evenly as well. So it's unlike a traditional sand and cement screed, which you can't go down to 22 millimetres anyway, um, unless you've got additives and all sorts in it, which might affect the pipes. But, so there we go, there's, there's the manifold, all ready piped up, full of water, under pressure. Let's have a look at the dial. Now the reason we do that is to make sure that there's no leaks, obviously, because um, that's, you know, if someone did nick a pipe, you want to know about it straight away. So as soon as you see that dial drop off, you'd know that you've got a problem, you've got to start looking for it. There's the second manifold for the other side of the building. We've cut a hole through the wall below. You can just about see it above the expansion strip there. That's where we'll take our tails through for all the other side. Um, so it's looking good. They're mounted on a temporary board. We're gonna dot and dab this wall straight behind. So all we have to do is just loosen that board or flick it out the way, drop in the plasterboard, and then we'll put a new board over the top, which is a finished product if you like. So there we go. Kitchen, diner, stairs are gonna be here, manifolds under stairs, utility room around the corner, and so on. So now we'll let the guys get on, get it all latexed out, and it's gonna look sweet. So everything's ready. Now what Alex and his team have done is put down their leveling, we call them a spider, and they laser all these in to get the exact thickness. We also know from our system how many bags we're going to be using or we should be using. And in this floor area here, we've been told by the underfloor manufacturer and supplier, we will need 73 bags. So we've got all the bags outside, they're in the garage. The pump is set up, it mixes the screed, it pumps the screed, comes through, and then they'll lay it all perfectly flat and level to here. So we know where we've got a low spot and a high spot, we use a little bit more in places. So what we want to end up with is if we use 80 bags, we need to replace seven to get the rest of the job finished a bit later down the line. Anyhow, let's go outside. They're just about to do what we call a slump test. This means that they measure exactly the amount of water, exactly the ratio of powder. It goes through the pump and it doesn't run too far. So let's go and see them do that. So it's a little bit on the noisy side. We've got compressors and all sorts of stuff going, but Alex will show us. All right, Alex. Hi, right. So let me come over here. Right. Ugh. For the benefit of everyone who's watching this, this is the slump test. This is the slump test. And you do this for every job. 
do this at the beginning of every job just to make sure the material consistency is what we want before we start pumping it into the house. Okay, and this machine is sp specific for this task? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, where, where's the, well, the water comes from there on that big bucket? Water comes from there, we're plugged into the generator over there, the power, and uh, that's it, the powder goes in the top, hooked up to the water, so we'll turn it on and get some material coming out, and we'll slump test it. Brilliant, so we're going to get a slump test done now. I'm looking forward to seeing this. And where are you aiming it to? Where do you want it to finish? What we're looking for is somewhere between 29 and 31 centimetres. That is really finite, isn't it? That's really kind of long. We know that that would be about right. So when you pull that up, and you're hoping it will run out to there. But by about now, so we're pretty much there. We might just, by the time we start pumping yeah, yeah, it in yeah. the pipe, Brilliant. we might just give it a tiny bit more water when we get in there. But Brilliant. I'm happy with that. And um, is there a certain amount of time you let it run for before you say, no, it's yeah. right or wrong? Just a few seconds. You've got an idea now, haven't you? Yeah. It's like we, a pan. We know, we know that that's about Did you know it's pancake day tomorrow? It is. And my daughter's birthday as well. Is it? Absolutely, yeah. Is it? Happy birthday, Kira. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Kira, and it's pancake day. So we, we know as well the machine's been set up for this material, so it's been it's been running at perfect consistency. Yeah. So this is a different batch of material. Yeah. But it different be... batch in terms of make, you mean? No, the same make, but just different just... batches vary slightly. But All right, fine. We know that it's going to be there or thereabouts. All right. So we'll probably do another slump test when we start doing actually pumping it in, fine. just to make sure we're on. All right. Brilliant. Well, we'll capture a bit of that stuff coming in. So this is where it begins. This is where it begins. It's lovely and relaxed. Everyone's relaxed. There's no shouting. There's no hollering. And there's no noise. And it's very nice. And that's it. And you, is there a certain speed it always comes out, Alex, or is it always that speed? Or? It's the same speed. It's about 40 litres a minute. You don't... You, and that's it. You can regulate that. You don't try and make it go super, super, super fast. No, no, that's, that's it. It's all dictated okay. by the... The oh yeah, that's good though, isn't it? I yeah, mean, that's manageable, enough. doesn't it? Yeah. Fast enough. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely job, isn't it? And anyone who's thinking about using a system like this, I think it's imperative that the manufacturers of this system, or the people who sell this type of system, say, oh, you know, you can just mix this stuff up, but you really can't do it in a, with a whisk in a bucket because seventy. I'm telling you, seventy-three bags of this is unmanageable. You'd be going, you know, you'd be doing a batch, coming back, it'd be all unmanageable and it wouldn't be flat by the time you finished. And also they recommend that in the doorways you've got to put a little expansion job. And when I spoke to them about that, saying I didn't want that, I wanted it all to be the same, they said, well, if you're pumping it, you can, you can manage it. But if you're not, you need to work room by room because you'll get into all sorts of trouble. Anyway, we also do a, bit, a little bit of shuttering there around like this pipe manifold. And the reason for that is because I don't really want to cement that in. Um, and hopefully that will hold up. We might get a little bit leak through, but you can see that it's kind of siliconed and those strips, if you like, or these larves, have been cut to just about the same size of the pipes and popped between the castellated castles and bedded on a little bit of uh, low modulus silicon, which we can easily ease out again afterwards, which will be absolutely perfect. And you can see that there's nothing leaking in from that side. Right, I'll get out of the guy's way because they are busy getting this in and they'll probably want a cup of tea in a minute. I'm a glorified tea maker. Just run over to this side again and there we have some shuttering here to allow for that manifold set and the pipes to pass through the wall. And we've also got that one that's just under pressure. You can see we've got it set to two bar. We check that on a daily basis. You can see in uh, where the actuators will be eventually. You can see that the dials are showing water in the system, which is exactly what we want. So this is the very last bit getting put in now. Everything's done with a lot of care here at the big build. As you know, and this is no different. So that's it. I mean, this gear has been put in here. It takes a long time to set up, get everything ready, leveled out. But once you've pumped it in, then you're just going to dap it, paddle it now, are you? You've done all that already, or...? No, it's going to get dappled now. Dappled, yeah? Lovely. 
I'd say anyone trying to do this bag by bag with a whisk and a drill, you're wasting your time because you need about three buckets. You need to keep the buckets clean. You need to have a couple of guys mixing or one mixing, one running it in, one pouring it and laying it. And I just think that you can get into all kinds of mess with it because you know, this has taken about 40 minutes for them to get it pumped in nice and gently, nice and slowly. But you try doing 73 bags of this with a whisk and a bucket and a couple of guys and you're in trouble. It seems really counterintuitive, but actually what Alex is then doing, he's going back in there and he's using this special lightweight, almost like a tamping device, except it's made with a pole at the bottom. Is it a pole, Alex? Yes. Uh, it's a pole, but you can see how nice and even it's gonna make everything. This is a little bit like the anhydrite squeeze. You see them do exactly the same thing with that as well. And from experience of having my place done um, with this same system, it's really flat, it's really nice to work on afterwards. And we're laying a Carndeaton type floor here, which is actually called a paleo click, which means that there's no underlay, it's got a built-in underlay, and it'll be absolutely perfect on this floor. And even if you were tiling it, there's not the need for rubbing this one down. Is there, Alex? You don't need to rub no. this one down. Yeah, so there's no um, latents that get left on the surface of it. It's really quite a nice material for any kind of finish, whether it's carpet, whether it's tiles, whether it's wood, you can deal with this. And that's looking good. So Alex and the lads are nearly done now getting in their screen. It's all finished and they're just about to clear up, clean down everything and disappear, which is great. And then they'll come back to do the other half of the building when we've laid the underfloor heating and all the bits and pieces. And the reason we're doing that is because we are pushed for space and we can bring everything that's in there, all the other underheating sort of bits and pieces onto here and work from here. Now this will be dry enough for us to walk on tomorrow and it only takes a few days before you could even tile it, I believe. Um, and that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check back soon for some more exciting episodes here at The Big Build.